Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but I'm a little salty. I'm a little, a little PO'd. As they say, I'm going to talk about Doctor Who. And we're going to talk about that regeneration scene. You know that one that was uh, rumored nine or ten months ago? That one? Yeah, well, it actually happened. It happened. Uh, and to me, this feels like desperation on the part of the BBC to try to fix this show. We've been talking about the uh, state of Doctor Who for about four years now, five years now on the channel and how under Chris Chibnall, the show has hit an all time low, both in ratings and creatively. And that, uh, you know, we had the media out there in force trying to defend the show saying it's just, you know, the, the deal. It's the bigots and the misogynists and the homophobes and the yada, 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 right? We have endured a lot of vitriol on this channel in the comments. We've actually had other uh, YouTubers who cover Doctor Who favorably come after us. And we've had the media attack, uh, you know, attack us and other YouTubers saying that, um, you know, Doctor Who uh, fandom is toxic and we need to get rid of the politically correct term because that's what was being thrown out there when the show uh, first brought on Jodie Whittaker. So now the same media outlets that were throwing crap at us and other YouTubers and other critics of the show are now agreeing with us. They're now agreeing with us. Uh, according to The Independent, according to this person on The Independent, uh, Doctor Who is broken. Doctor Who is broken. You don't say. You don't say the show is so broken that they had to bring David Tennant back. Spoiler. <laughs> they had to bring David Tennant back just to get people to watch the show again. They had to bring Russell T. Davies back just to get people to watch the show again. You don't say the show is broken. You guys are about four years too late to the party. And uh, again, this is another indication of that pendulum swing we've been talking about that we are on the other side of, I guess you'd call it a peak PC or woke culture that uh, you know more and more studios and more and more outlets are starting to realize that they're on the wrong side of it, that there are more people who dislike changes to uh, you know, massive, massive changes, massive, massive retcons to existing franchises than there are people that are rooting for it. And there's no amount of media noise that can change the public's opinion. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about this because I about fell out of my chair. You know, to be honest, I forgot that. Yes, I guess it was yesterday was the last episode with Jodie Whittaker's doctor because I completely tuned out and I saw the clip, the regeneration. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Five years ago, I would have been like, holy hell, this is awesome. And now I just I don't I don't care. But I do care about this because I really am tired of the media demonizing fans who have legitimate grievances uh, until they realize that they're on the wrong side of it. And then they come back and they act like, oh, we agreed with you guys all along. We always did. You know, here, here's, here's the independent just a couple of years ago, you know, backlash, the misogynists, the bigots. And then as of uh, today, you know, Dr. Who's broken. No shit. Uh, again, you know, it's different writers, but still no shit. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 277, almost 278,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, we've been talking about the utter state of Doctor Who off and on for the last four or five years now, that um, Doctor Who is in the worst condition it's been in since the late 1980s. And you can point the finger of blame at Chris Chibnall his enablers, and even to some degree, Jodie Whittaker. Now, to be fair, I've said before, I don't think Jodie Whittaker is a bad actress. I don't think she was right for the doctor, or at least her take on the doctor was right. Um, she didn't ha ever have that uh, uh, gravitas that the doctor has. Even Matt Smith's doctor, you know, as, as uh, young and fun-loving as he can be, he has a dark side. I never saw that with Jodie Whittaker. But, of course, the biggest problem I have with Doctor Who under Chris Chibnall was the big F you to the Doctor Who fandom, that they retcon the Doctor's origin, that the Doctor is not a Time Lord, that the Doctor started out as a, a little girl from some other race and was killed multiple times so the Time Lords could steal her powers of regeneration and that there were 
potentially thousands of incarnations of the doctor before the doctors that we knew. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. I think it's terrible. And uh, it did come out that Chris Chibnall said the reason he did that was that he was adopted. And this was kind of his his fan fiction he had as a child, uh, the timeless children. That, that was that was his fanfic as a kid. That, oh, the doc, the doctor's probably adopted, too. So I'm going to make up this story. It's all a bunch of bullshit. The show, the ratings are terrible. Um, they had to turn production over to Bad Wolf, which is uh, Russell T. Davies. And he's bringing in uh, is it Shudi Gatwa is the new the new doctor, the new, new doctor, you know, for now we've got David Tennant as a stunt (laughs) basically to bring people back to the show. I mean, that is the utter state of Dr. Who Dr. Who is at such an all time low that we have to bring back the most popular modern doctor. And even this article, two comments, two comments, that's it. Um, nobody cares. I I mean, we used to get over a hundred thousand views on Dr. Who videos, and we're lucky if we break 20,000 views on Doctor Who videos. The, the audience just is not there anymore. Same thing happened with Star Wars, too. People don't care. They got tired of the drama. At first, people were outraged and disgusted. And then after a while, they just came to accept that uh, these franchises had moved on, that they apparently moved on to try to please some other non-existent phantom audience, uh, and that they don't want the old school fans. And we've seen it time and time and time and time again, and it never, ever works. It never works. Not with a major franchise. Like you can get away with a reboot or reimagining with something that's not extremely popular. But when you've got one of the most popular, uh, you know, fantasy franchises, entertainment properties in the world, you got to try to appeal, at least try to appeal to the existing fans, not tell them to go piss off, whether it's Doctor Who or Star Trek um, or He-Man or, you know, so, so many others, uh, Marvel. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And this, this, uh, anti-marketing that these studios have been doing, that the media has been helping them do for the last five or six years is failing catastrophically. So here we go. Coming from the independent, um, this is, uh, Isabel Lewis, again, not the same author that wrote this article on the independent just a couple of years ago, Lucy Jones, it's all about the misogyny. Uh, Jodie Whittaker's stint as the doctor was dogged by underwhelming scripts and tanking audience figures. Can we admit that now? Isabel Lewis asks if the return of Russell T. Davies can bring the show back to its glory years. Um, this is this is scathing, and this is everything that we've been saying, that other YouTubers have been saying, and that we were demonized for for years. But now that it's over, oh, it's okay. Now we can tell the truth. Now we can tell the truth. Now that it's in the rearview mirror. It's time to move on, everybody. It's just time to move on. Russell T. Davies could be the savior of Doctor Who, could he? With Jodie Whittaker's stint as the two-hearted Time Lord having come to a close. Correction, I don't think she's a Time Lord. I didn't watch the, the last episode, but they retconned all that shit. The BBC is hoping so. Her casting came with so much promise, but Whittaker leaves the show with dwindling viewing figures, lost fans, and the overarching sense that showrunner Chris Chibnall really did her dirty. That is true. We've said this before. You know, with with somebody else writing her, her doctor might have actually been really good, you know, Um, but we'll never know. We'll never know. So why not bring back Davies, the man responsible for reviving the show in 2005 at a point when Doctor Who desperately needs a reset? Can we admit that now? Already, it looks like the plan might be working. Davies marked his return during Sunday's episode with a major surprise. Spoiler. David Tennant would be returning as the doctor for three episodes before Shudi Gatwa takes the reins. For the first time in a long while, people were actually talking about the show again. Because, oh my God, Russell T. Davies is coming back and David Tennant's back for three episodes. I mean, that's that's how bad things are. They had, they had to bring back David Tennant to get people interested. Russell T. Davies to get people interested again. The more cynical among us see Davies hiring as an attempt to cash in on nostalgia and recapture the show's former, former magic. At the peak of the Davies tenant era in 2009, more than 10 million viewers were tuning in every week. In comparison, this year's specials clawed together an average viewership of 2.62 million with just 3.7 million watching Whitaker's regeneration. Davies isn't a writer stuck in the past. 
uh, as the international success of years and years and it's a sin have shown. His ideas are original and have continually started conversations while his scripts are warm and inclusive without ever feeling preachy. Look, guys, this is the difference. This is everything. This is what we talk about all the damn time on the channel. People write us off and they're like, you're against diversity and inclusion. And da, da, da. No, we're against uh, race swapping, gender bending characters for no other reason than to say you did it. Existing characters, right? And we've talked before about shows we've loved in the past where they got the point across. Star Trek The Next Generation, good example. You know, Russell T. Davies run on Doctor Who, good example where they can get the point across what they're trying to say about the world, about society, about humanity, without it feeling preachy. New shows these days, especially Doctor Who under Chimnall, ham-fisted, screaming at you, telling you you're an awful person. Nobody's going to listen to that. Nobody's going to listen to that. You know, uh, shows like uh, Next Gen, they used to get you to think. You know, they would, they would present both sides of an ar argument a lot of times, and then they would get you to really think it through and come up with your own conclusions. Now TV shows just yell at you. They scream at you uh, and people are tuning out. It's not to say it's going to be an easy job. After all, the Doctor Who that Davies will inherit comes with pretty a pretty bruised reputation. Can we admit that now? Holy shit. In 2017, there was excitement that Whitaker would pick up the sonic screwdriver from Capaldi. Sonic dildo. It was a sonic dildo that she inherited with uh, Mork from Orcs fashion sense. I mean, they really did do her dirty. Uh, Chris Chibnall from Broadchurch was joining as the showrunner. Under Chibnall's reign, Doctor Who swerved between being utterly forgettable and memorable for all the wrong reasons. Holy shit. Individual episodes were dragged down with exposition and cliches, while the broader story arcs were impossible to keep track of. In its worst moments, nearly 60 years of Doctor Who canon was trampled all over. And if you hadn't already given up, the last uh, series titled Flux, a self-contained run of episodes, both baffling and inconsequential, was sure to do it. They actively chased off the audience. And the Independent is admitting it. Go get them, baby. Kick their ass. That was, that was the geeky cameo. Um... <laughs> The biggest crime of the Chibnall era was to dampen Whitaker's shine. Her doctor was overly serious and introspective and boring as hell. I'm not giving room to play in the way that her predecessors were. I went to recent screening of the finale, and in a cast Q&A, Whitaker giggled, dropped the odd F-bomb, and exhibited a charm that had been notably missing from the show itself. The show was ham-fisted, preachy, and boring. And you can be a lot of things, but you can never be boring if you're trying to entertain people. You can never be boring. And, and Doctor Who was boring as hell. Um, so they really did. I, I do think in, in some level they did her dirty. Uh, what Davies can bring, at least for now, is a reset. We have to reset. The show is so broken, we have to reset it. It was disappointing not to see Whitaker regenerate in the Gatwa, given the thrill his casting generated. Um, I'm not that familiar with him. I saw a couple of clips. I don't think he'll be bad. Depends on what, again what he's given to work with, you know. Uh, but Tennant's return feels necessary for Doctor Who. For a lot of viewers, he is the Doctor. In our nostalgia-heavy culture, an actor already loved by the public, combined with a writer we know gives good Who, should be a safe bet to win viewers' hearts again. It's almost as if we should have just kept doing what we were doing because it worked. And people had certain expectations for this show and this franchise and if we just gave them more of what they wanted and they were willing to watch, things would have been fine. But no, we, we had to get people in there. Didn't they hire like soap opera writers or some shit? We had to get people in there that knew better than the fans. We had to get people in there that wanted to put the message above the entertainment. And again, a guy like Davies can do both. And that's what we need. If you're going to go down that route, Doctor Who has always been a, a progressive show. Same with Star Trek, but they haven't been nauseatingly ham fisted political propaganda like they've become in recent years. People don't want that. They're not going to pay for that. Yeah, they don't want it. Yeah, what she said. Uh, so Tenet's only going to appear in three episodes this year. Donna Noble is also coming back. Uh, there's clearly hope that a step back will allow the show to move forward. 
You can already see the impact. Social media is abuzz with Doctor Who chat, while friends have told me they plan to tune in again for the first time in a decade. Let me, let me reread this. Friends have told me they plan to tune in again for the first time in a decade. This could also happen for other franchises that have lost their way because you've listened to the wrong people for almost a decade and they've destroyed your franchises. They've destroyed these evergreen things that people love. They've destroyed Star Trek. They've destroyed Star Wars. They've destroyed Lord of the Rings now is going through this. And what is going to happen is either the franchises are just going to you know, die a death of a thousand cuts and people are just going to forget about them or they're going to have to do something similar and do a, a bit of a reset to get people back. I don't know why this is so damn hard for people to figure out. If McDonald's stops selling hamburgers and only sells pizza and the pizza is not that good, they can't compete with Pizza Hut. It's just not Pizza Hut's not even good, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's not good pizza, it's shitty pizza. And they've tried selling pizza and it was shitty, but this is really shitty pizza. And you don't have the option of getting a burger from McDonald's. What's going to happen to the company? You know, wh why are these studios so fucking dumb that they keep doing this again and again and again? They keep listening to dumbasses who razzle dazzle them. They come in, a lot of them fresh out of school and they're like, this is what all the all the Zoomers want. We want the all new, all different Doctor Who. We want the all new, all different Star Wars with go girl power, female lead. Not really. Make a new franchise. Make a new thing. But we've had people admit that that's hard. It's hard to do. You know, this is basically a shortcut for a lot of people who commandeer these shows. It's a shortcut to get their stuff out there, say their piece without having to do the work. Without having to do the work. You know, uh, George Lucas went through a hell of a lot getting Star Wars off the ground. You don't have what it takes. Fine, you'll just come in, you'll commandeer his work, his legacy, and take a shortcut because people are going to listen to you because it's Star Wars. And it's his legacy, his brand that you're riding the coattails of. The same with Doctor Who. You've got six decades of fan goodwill that was pissed away in four years. You know, was it worth it? Uh, you know, I'll tell you the truth. Like we go to Disney or did past tense because Disney's a cluster right now, but uh, we would go to Disney often. We would go to Epcot. We would go to the UK pavilion. And at one point in time, there was all kinds of Doctor Who merchandise, all kinds of stuff, toys and cups and shirts and, or, you know, CDs and LPs, all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Last time we were there, there was hardly anything. And I don't, I don't know if any of it was 13th Doctor. Like, you don't see 13th Doctor stuff very often. I saw the Build-A-Bears, complete with, uh, with uh, the Doctor's dildo. But, uh, you know, I, I just... This isn't hard. This is not hard. You get a classic franchise. You treat it with respect. And the fans will come back and they'll give you the money. But once you burn the bridge, a lot of times you nuke it. Now, I think normies will be like, yeah, hey, this is pretty cool. But I don't think they realize that like David Tennant's only coming back for a couple episodes. Now, shoot, he got one. He might be good. He might he might be damn good. Um, or, you know, it could be current year Russell T. Davies and he's not the same guy he was in 2005, you know, and it could just be a kind of a Trojan horse like, oh, we'll lure you back with David Tennant and then we're going to drop the other shoe, you know, once uh, once we introduce the new doctor. I don't know. But this isn't hard to get right. Star Wars really isn't that hard to get right. The expanded universe was doing it for decades before Disney bought it. You know, uh, let's go back to this uh, because that's the thing you can't shake from Doctor Who, the inordinate amount of goodwill people have towards it. Again, Doctor Who was my one of my favorite shows for a very long time. And uh, two or three episodes in the Jodie Whittaker's run, I'm like, this is dog shit. I'm out. <laughs> And I've sat through some pretty shitty episodes of Doctor Who, but I'm like, this is what the whole series is going to be. Parents who hid behind their sofas watching the show in the 60s and 70s passed Doctor Who on to their kids in the naughties, the naughty kids, who now have the same desire to share it with the next generation. It was Doctor Who, new Doctor Who, was our family's kind of go-to series. That and Avatar The Last Airbender 
Um, you know, we, we, it was like appointment TV. We watched these shows, have good memories watching these shows. And uh, I was the last man standing on Doctor Who. Like everybody kind of fell away from it after Matt Smith left. And I was the last one standing. I watched every episode of Capaldi's era, even though some of those were complete trash. I liked him as the doctor. I just think he wasn't given, he wasn't given enough to work with. He wasn't, he was in the same situation as Whitaker where, you know, if he were allowed to shine, he, he was really good. He would monologue. He was really good, but his, his stories were garbage. Um, but I love this though. We feel the pain of Dr. Who being bad so strongly, uh, according to this it's a piece of British history, we want it to be good. And I'm an American. I, I want it to be good. Please, for the sake of the Whovians, let it be good. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But this is uh, this is very interesting that we have a woman writing an article on the Independent of all places, admitting everything that we've been saying, everything that other YouTubers have been saying for years. The show was in a very, very bad place that basically needed a reset. It needed to be put out of its misery. And uh, here we are. They're so desperate. They're bringing back David Tennant and Russell T. Davies to try to salvage it. We'll see what happens. I don't know, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, post some comments. We'll talk later.